Bionanogenomics stock is the topic of today's presentation. And if you're somebody who's invested in BNGO stock or thinking about investing, then you'll want to watch this because we look at some concerns that we have with the company. Now, on the tin, it appears to be quite attractive. So, Bionanogenomics uses a razor and blade model. And the males watching this, who constitute about 95% of our audience, would understand this quite well. So the firm that you see here, Harry's, that's a U.S. company that's edging in on Gillette's market share. So this shaving kit, for example, they'll sell you for a dollar and then they get you hooked and pretty soon you're buying their razor blades, which are cheaper than Gillette actually. And their recurring revenues from those blades um, make up very high margin consumable. So in the life sciences sector, Razor and blade models are quite popular, with Illumina perhaps being the poster child for a successful razor blade model. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're selling razors or life sciences equipment. You need to be concerned with some things. One would be your customer moving to a substitute. So that would be somebody moving from Harry's back to Gillette, or there's another uh, firm out there that's also trying to edge in on this uh, market. Um, the customer stops using the product so much, so people are likely to um, shave the same amount. But in the life sciences world, that comes down to how valuable your product is. And you're ideally looking for networking effects. So Illumina has been quite successful because they have upwards of 80% market share. What happens sometimes when you get that big is you get lax. And that's what happened with Illumina. And they're having some of their own problems. But when we look at any disruptive tech firm, we always say that revenue growth is a must. So if you're disrupting, then let's see that. And disruption comes in the form of capturing market share, which is reflected in growing revenue streams. And when companies scale, they can then achieve profitability and expand their gross margins as they scale. That's why we're not overly concerned about profitability for disruptive tech firms. So um, in when there's a recession or when it comes difficult to raise capital, then certainly we're paying attention to runway. But you need to be careful about firms that are spending a dollar to make 50 cents because then what happens if sales and marketing expenditures go away? Well, suddenly the sales dry up. Now, when you have a sticky product, customers will keep purchasing that product regardless of whether or not a salesperson is calling them every quarter. Uh, but for subsidized products, customers will quickly lose interest. So what we like to see for razor blade business models is that gross margins are expanding. So they'll start low and they'll go high. So when it comes to bio nanogenomics, their gross margins have been anywhere from um, 30 to mid 20s over time, and they don't appear to be consistently expanding. Now, I wanted to touch on this chart here. So, this was the last time that we looked at this stock, and in late 2020, shares of this firm soared over 2,000% in less than 60 days. That's what you see here in this chart because an ARC Invest analyst made a comment on Twitter. You can see it here on the right. He wants to speak with a key person at BioNanogenomics, and then this individual says, can you help arrange a meeting? That's um, probably not how you um, want to uh, be conducting due diligence, but you can see the end result there. And we warned investors that's very clear hype that uh, that would eventually dissipate, and it did. So the last time we left uh, BNGO stock, you see this article here. I'll put a link to it in the description of this video. It's called Bionanogenomic Bio Stock. What exactly do they do? So if you're curious about what this firm does, basically they're using this optical technology to do sequencing. So um, more granularity than long read, they say. Um, they're estimating this opportunity is about 10,000 machine placements, which represents a potential total addressable market of $2.8 to $3.8 billion, including consumables. So that's not that big. Now, if they're the only provider of this technology and they think they can easily capture all that opportunity, then sure, it's big. But they're going to need to capture it a lot quicker. So over half of their staff at that time were working in sales and marketing. So that's quite a few. And uh, they had a market cap then of about $614 million. We did the math on our simple valuation ratio, uh, which came in at 24. 
which was quite rich. Now their market cap is about a third of that, around $200 million. So we said this, selling 67 machines in 2021 is great and all, but we need to see these numbers become much bigger to hit that 10,000 number. And they, at that time, expected to have an install base of 240 machines by the end of 2022, an additional 79. We said that's only 12 machines more than they sold in 2021. So remember that, 240 machines by the end of 2022. Looky here. At the end of 2022, they have exactly that number. So they must have a very, very accurate um, sales pipeline forecasting tool because they hit that number exactly. Now, I wanted to point out a number of things to start here. So they say, 10th consecutive quarter of year-over-year -year revenue growth. That's great to see. So we have the revenue growth that we're looking for. You can see that nice, steady increase over time. Note how in the fourth quarter of every year, there's a spike. And we've highlighted, highlighted that in the chart you can see there. And that's, uh, that's just seasonality and... Um, you could smooth that out by doing a trailing 12 months or whatnot, but um, you can see it here. This gap gross margin of 28%, they say nearly double the 15% growth gross margin from Q1 2022. Well, that's really low. And just because you were able to raise it to 28%, that's still very low. And we're going to touch on uh, that more in a second. But you see here they have their revenue guidance for uh, this year, 35 to $38 million. We have that growth. But What's concerning here at the bottom, $95.8 million in cash, cash equivalents and available for sale securities at the end of Q1 2023. That amount of liquidity, they, don't, uh, they can't assure investors that will last them for the next 12 months. That's a concern. Now, when we look at net new machine sales at BioNano Genomics, we've calculated that using the previous chart for each quarter. So we're showing you here how many machines that massive sales and marketing team is selling every quarter. Uh, they're maxing out at about, let's say, uh, 23 machines a month. That's with 50% of their staff selling. Uh, assuming that's 92 new machines per year, that would take them 51 years to get 50% market penetration. Can they sell faster without spending more on S&M because their existing spend doesn't seem sustainable. Now, another concern that we have here is around consumables per year, per machine. We've simply taken here the number of machines at the end of the quarter, divided that by consumables, or taken consumables expenditures and divided that by number of machines, and then you get consumables per machine that you see here on the right. Usage is not increasing over time. That's a concern. Now, Illumina has an install base of 20,000 machines, at least in Q4 2022, and for that same quarter, they had $687 million in consumables, so about $34,350 per year per machine. You can compare that to what's being generated by BioNano Genomics, and we want to see these numbers going up over time because they show increasing usage, not going down. Now, when it comes to operating cash flows, how much money is needed each quarter to keep this business operating? Let's say around $30 million. Uh, the customer or the company admits it may not have enough money to last 12 months. That's just simple math. So what are their options? Well, they can take on debt to raise more money to run their business. They can give away equity in exchange for money, and they can do that in two ways. What's called a at-the-market offering or a traditional follow-on offering. Now we're going to talk a little bit more today about this concept of a at-the-market offering because we see this fairly frequently. It's become uh, more common. You would have seen GameStop raise over a billion dollars using this method, and it's offering securities into an existing trading market at the prices related to current market prices. So these are continuous offerings that provide issuers with a flexible way to raise modest amounts of capital. So I think BioNano Genomics is paying their broker somewhere around 3% commission to sell up to $200 million worth of stock. So they can sell just issued shares or ones already owned, right? So you need to pay attention to dilution here 
And these at-the-market offerings tend to be smaller and more spaced out than more traditional follow-on offerings where a set number of shares are sold at a set price in one lot. That's more common to see larger firms do that. We see smaller firms use at-the-market offerings and we have a general concern about that because it seems like they don't have other options, so they use the at-the-market offering. We'll talk more about that in a second, but when it comes to dilution for bio-nanogenomics, you'll see here that they had very steep dilution between 2020 and 2021, and it's sort of steadily increasing since then. Now, here's a question for the class. Could an at-the-market offering be seen as a last resort for companies? It would not make sense to sell shares at the market when you have a rapidly declining share price. That's the case for bio-nanogenomics. The last time I looked, I think they're around $0.60 cents a share. Not that the price of the share means anything, but it does in this case because they're going to be delisted if they don't meet exchange requirements. And you see here this comment from Titan. It says, Companies in need of money immediately might sell at undesirable prices if other capital raising options aren't available. So that's what, when we look at bio nanogenomics, that's what we see here selling at the market because there aren't other alternatives. Now, will this company run into problems raising enough money to stay afloat? Well, we wouldn't invest and, and find out. First of all, it's $200 million market cap. We don't invest in companies uh, with a market cap less than a billion dollars. So that, that's a showstopper and we move on. But when you're looking at the at-the-market offering here, put yourself in the shoes of the broker. So you're trying to sell a stock here whose chart is hitting the skids harder than a Portland wino. What are you going to do to create demand here? Now, newbie investors typically see ch shares under a dollar as quote-unquote cheap and if they're told that the company is on the cusp of making something great happen, then this story is going to write itself. But it's important that people understand the opportunity on offer. And then when you look on Twitter, you see lots of Twitter accounts pumping this thing for some reason. And that brings us to our comment here. No cheerleading, please. So we saw that a lot uh, last year. We noted quite a few cheerleaders pushing bingo as the next Illumina while simultaneously talking about how they'll be acquired by Illumina any day. Which one is it, lads? So we don't want anybody coming around here cheerleading this thing. We're here to talk about the points of contention raised in this video. When we look on Twitter today, we see lots of banter from quote-unquote traders. Uh, that's a fool's errand. And no-name accounts. So there's a lot of ticker interest pointing to cheerleaders still pumping this stock. This isn't the first at-the-market offering we've seen accompanied by cheerleaders. So maybe some of you academics or MBAs could uh, turn this into a very interesting academic study or point us to one that already exists. If there's a correlation between at-the-market offerings and cheerleading, then there's some there there, and it's probably worth looking at. And remember that cheerleading is independent of stock price direction. If the stock price is going up, then the train is leaving the station and you're missing out. If it's going down, then this is a value opportunity. You need to jump on board before something great happens. So just to conclude, we're still obviously avoiding bio nanogenomics. The company's more reasonably priced today with a simple valuation ratio of six. That compares to our catalog average of 6.5. So uh, certainly you wouldn't consider them to be overvalued, but we have some concerns. These consistently low gross margins, their cash crunch problem, usage concerns, so we see consumables isn't growing over time, and this large sales effort it takes to sell 23 machines a year. It, based on what we've presented today, it seems like this company has lots of possible downside, not a lot of upside. Now, of course, the stock could go up 10 times tomorrow because of the cheerleaders. That doesn't change the fundamental problems we're seeing with this business. We invest in companies, not stocks. Now, I'm going to put up another video here for you to watch. Before you watch that, please click the Analyze logo on the right, subscribe to our channel, then watch the video on the left. Thanks for taking the time to watch this today.